All right, so like I said, we're going to make this navigation. Um, just to give you an idea of how to do a proper navigation. Now, navigations can be horizontal or vertical. So we're just going to do this horizontal navigation and then again, look at how you float images, you know, to the left and have the text kind of wrap around it nicely to the right. All right, so let's do that. So I'm just going to call this, um, let's just say, I don't know, say website navigation. Somebody's phone is ringing in my ear, or somebody's computer. I don't know. You might need to mute yourself. If you're not muted, it's kind of ringing in my ear. Okay. So, what's that navigation? We want to do something like this. So, I'm just going to create a couple containers here so we can, um, you know. Now this navigation has one, two, three, four, five. So it doesn't matter if he has five, he has four, three, or more. The um, important thing is you got to, so let's lay out our divs here. So you're opening div. Uh, I think it's a good idea, you know, when you start, always just create a container right that's going to hold that's going to hold all your divs so you just want to do that all the time because when you look at your website um, obviously there's so many different items um you know they can't just float by themselves so you need to have something around it. you know containers like we've said so create your container i'm going to say you know as usual you have a comment container starts here and then uh, you end it here. That way you don't get confused about, you know, what's happening on your website, where all the code is. So as usual, I'm gonna call this container. That's just because that's the name we chose to call it. If there's no, if you go online and search container HTML, you're going to see anything. So container is just the name we use. Right? You can use whatever name you want, but container sounds like a, like a good name to you. So it's just a random name. It doesn't really mean anything. It's not, it's not necessarily part of HTML code. It's just a word, and we call it the ID, right, for the outer box. Right, the outer box that's going to hold everything in place here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so that's what container is. All right. So straight away, I'm just going to create the. Um, well, let me do this. So inside the container, uh, we're going to create just a couple more divs. What we're trying to do is the navigation. So I'm just gonna put a, maybe maybe like three divs, right? Just to show you guys what I'm doing here. So we're gonna say, we have a div for say, banner. I'm going to copy and paste. We have a div for navigation. And then let's just say we have one more div for, you know, like content area. Something like that. <clears throat> Just keep it simple. So 
so on, on line nine, we have the banner that's going to be uh, the banner at the top. Let me just put this here. So that's your banner up here. This banner is, you know, something like, something like this banner, and then we're going to have the navigation, which is the green um, navigation here. And then just a the content area, just give you an idea of how to set up your navigation and set up your images. All right, um, you guys have this code? Yep. Yeah. Um, there's somebody here called Divine. Divine? It doesn't yeah. sound to me like you've been here since the first day. Because I know we had a lot of conversations on the first day. I don't remember you since then. So what's going on? I don't remember you being here, should I say? I was here a couple of times. A couple? Yes, okay, so I was here the other days because I was going through a lot. Uh, my mom was very sick and I lost someone from my family. So I'm sorry about that. Well, I'm sorry about the trouble you're having, uh, but I think, I don't know. I don't know how to say this. I don't know how to say this question, Divine. It's like uh, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being, I, don't know, I, think, I think we both know the answer to that question. So how are you going to be able to manage this class? You know, because I understand you've, you're having difficulty, but you know, how are you going to be able to understand what we're doing? What's the plan? Divine? Divine? Yeah. Still there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. So what's the plan? How are you going to do this? Because we've, I think you've missed a lot, right? Yeah. All right, so what you're going to do is you got to talk to me later because, you know, you probably don't want to talk about it now. So talk to me later. You want to do that? Yeah, sure. Okay. So let's, um, let's, keep, let's, let's keep this going. So I'm going to create a, you know, what? I always kind of like, because of time, do an inline style sheet. So I'm going to do an external style sheet now, you know, just to give you a sense of how it works because, you know, because you guys might think, oh, we'll never do external style sheets, so maybe it's not important. It is extremely important, especially when you have multiple web pages. You don't want to be, you know, individually styling those pages. So um, we're going to go back and forth between those two pages. So here's what we're going to do. Let's create the, the code for the external style sheets. So you always go link relationship, R-E-L. Um, then you have, uh, I think it's type. Uh, then you have href. So relationship is a um, style sheet. Type is text slash CSS. This is like standard code. You just put this there all the time. Now the name of your the, your your href is what's going to change. That's like the name of the CSS file, right? So we're just going to call this, you know, my style. Dot CSS. We don't have the style sheet yet. We're going to create it now. But we're just going to give it the name my style. Dot CSS. So this code here on this line four is like standard code. You always just type exactly the same thing, or you just cut and paste it but your href might be different based on a different file or different website that you're working on. All right, so let's create this my style, the CSS file. Just open up a blank page, a new page. Just make sure it's completely blank. Nothing there, absolutely nothing in there. Um, 
So I'm going to save this as my, make sure it's, okay, well, I got to, you know, let's do this. Make sure all your files are in the same folder. So before we do that, let me uh, save this HTML file, create a new folder for, you know, your files. Uh, where is it? So I'm just going to put it here. I'm going to put a, a new folder and say, just give it to this date, 3-15. You can put dashes in your file or folder names, but no other funny characters. So 3-15, you, you know, so you know what day you worked on it. So this is going to be my, um, just going to call it index, right? We've talked about that before, your index page is your first page. So index.htm, you can use htm or html. We've talked about that before also. You can sit down here, html, htm, both works. I use htm kind of like, I'm used to it. So you're free to use, but you've got to be consistent. You, you don't want to say html in some files and htm, htm in some files. You've got to be consistent. If you want to go html, it's got to be html in all your files. If it's got to be HTM, so you've got to uh, maintain some consistency there. All right, so this is my HTML, HTML file is saved. Now I'm going to save my CSS file in the same folder. So here it is at the bottom of my screen. You can see it here. So file save as. i got to go to that same folder. Open your folder and save it right there in the same folder. If you don't have your CSS and your HTML files in the same folder, they're not going to connect to each other, right? So it's not going to work. They both have to be in the same folder. All right, so I'm just going to, I'm going to obviously go back and forth. Uh, here's a HTML, here's a HTML. We've kind of, it's kind of like we're done with everything in here for now. So most of the work should be in your, at least the next few steps, should be in your CSS file. So I'm going to go to the CSS file. We need a style for the container, the banner, navigation, content area. So let's do container first. And in your container, you just want to, you know, put it right there and set your curly braces. So this is your CSS file. And your CSS file is connected to your HTML file thanks to this code on line four, this code right here. This code on line four has to be on every web page in your website. That is how you connect your HTML to your CSS file. Charles? Are you getting this stuff so far? Yep. I mean, this is this is all, all right. stuff we've done briefly before, I think. Briefly. Well, I mean the well, the specific external style sheet part, yeah. The divs, okay. though, we've done a lot. All right. So same thing. We're just going to set up a background color here, so we can see that div. Uh. I don't know, yellow. Uh, give it a so width. Now uh, we always go with twelve hundred, just because that's a that's a good size for a regular desktop or laptop. So twelve hundred px, um, and then we can just give it a, a height just for now. Uh, that's like we can get rid of the height, but just so we can see the box. We just give it a height of 600 px. We can always take that out uh, when we're done, or you know, when we keep as we keep working. So this is the container. Save the container, and now let's um, preview that work. So open up your your browser and drag your file. So go to your computer, your computer files. Look for that file you just created. Mine is here, here, here. 
and you want to drag. Um, now, some of you, let me say this. Sometimes I see that when you submit your files, you submit your CSS file. You don't need to submit your CSS file. Your CSS file is part of your website. So automatically it is joined. Of course, you've got to upload everything, right? You've got to upload all your files. But when you submit the files, like you submit the link, just submit one link. If you submit one link, that link is going to lead me to all your website files, you know, to all the links. But if you send me the CSS file, I keep wondering, why are you sending me the CSS file? <laughs> you know, the CSS file is part of the website. So it's all, all I'm going to see in the CSS file. Here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. So well, I'm going to just drag this, the HTML file to my browser, right? So you can see just my container. That's all I have so far. But if I right click to see the source, you can see that in the source code, right, the CSS file is part of it, right? So when I click on CSS, it's gonna show me the CSS I have so far. But you can't really do anything with the CSS. So sending it to me is like, why are you sending me your CSS file? Just send me the HTML file or the index file, uh, but there's no need sending the CSS file. It's like when you submit your files, you don't need to send me every single link to all your web pages. Just send me one link, and when I have that link, it's going to take me. It's like, it's like this web this website here, right? Let's say you created this website, and you want me to visit this website. All you send me is one link. You can send me the link to the sell page, or the link to. You know, the sell a house page, link to the rent page. Once I get one link and I land on the web page, well, I can go everywhere. I can go everywhere around the website, right? I can go everywhere I want to go. So maybe it's because, you know, we're just getting a hang of this, but maybe it's getting clearer to you on how the different pages, um, you know, work and connect together. All your files have to be uploaded, but when you send, when you want someone to view your website, you just send them one link. And that website, and when they get there, they can go to every part of your web, website. Um, all right, so let's keep going. So here's what we have so far. This is the container. Now, right off, uh, right away, let's let's kind of um, let's center this container, right? Like put it in the center of the browser. So I'm going to add this here. So you want to center it. That is margin um, left auto a u t o margin right a u t o. So margin dash left, margin dash right. That's how you are going to center center that uh, website. Like if I refresh the page, see it's centered. It's like the middle of the page. Equal distance on the right and on the left side. So that's how you center it. Margin. And of course, you know, always a good idea, like I say all the time, for you to have comments in your code. So you know what the code does. So you center the div in the browser, right? That's what it does. Copy that, paste it here. So when you go back to your code, you know it. It makes sense to you. You can see the you can see the comments there, and you remember because a lot of the code you use them over and over again. So if you remember what the different codes do, then it's easier for you, right, to troubleshoot and you know work on your website. If you just type the code, but you have no idea what the code is doing, then you're going to forget and struggle all the time. So the best way is to leave a comment there and say, this line does this here, and then you forget about it. All right, so that's the uh, container. Well, how about, 
Do you notice this? Like, there's a gap. If I kind of see right, right here, there's a gap at the top of my container, and just before the um, address bar, do you guys see that? This kind of space here. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let's get rid of that Let's space. Let's get rid of that space. So we go to we go in here and we sit. Well, actually, we we need we need to do that in the in the body tag. So let's put the body here. Now the body is an existing tag, so we don't need the pound sign. We only need the pound sign because the div tags are not like they're not necessarily part of HTML. So you have to create them and give them a name of your own. But the body tag exists, so we don't need the pound sign there. All right, so you do that in the body tag and you say margin zero, that's it. That's all you need there. Margin zero, you save that. And if you refresh your page, that little gap, that little white space, actually, you know what, let me change this uh, color to red so we can see. I'm just gonna get rid of this body thing for one second, because some of you may not have seen that. So you see the, see the gap right there? It's like up here somewhere at the top of your uh, screen. You're gonna see it right there. All right, so I'm gonna put the body, where is it? I have to undo, all right. So uh, body here, you put the body, ta body tag. Well, not a tag, just the name body here. You don't need any pound sign because it's an existing tag. Margin zero, save. And then you refresh your page, that space should be gone. Did you notice that the space did it disappear on your web page, guys? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that should take care of that space. And of course, if you put a comment there, I'm just going to copy this and put it here. You say, uh, "Oops." Just going to copy this comment and say uh, removes white space. At the top of the, I don't know, at the top of the, say, container div, or on top, removes the white space on top of the container div, something like that. And then you close your comment. And you refresh just to be sure it's all still fine. Okay. So that's what we have so far. Uh, it's just a container. The next thing we need to do is just a lot of copying and pasting now based on what you want to do. What we want to do is we're going to put a banner up here. We're going to put a, just like the uh, exotic travel, just going to put a, a banner. And more importantly, we want to work on the navigation and then another container for some little information. So that is right here in your index. Now we need the banner, so copy and paste everything you have here, paste it down here, and you can just edit. This is your banner. And that's all we need to do. Well, you can change the color of the, of the, um, of the banner, of course. Just gonna say it's pink. The width is gonna be the same. We don't need the margin, blah, blah, blah there. The height, uh, we can just say the height is, um, can give it 300 or 350, whatever. It depends on the size, right? It depends on the height of your banner. Yeah. So that is all up to you. But the weight is the same weight as the container because we want it to, you know, go from the left edge or to the right edge of 
um, the container. So the banner is the same we have here on the uh, in the HTML page. So save, refresh your page, and your banner should be right there. Should be right up there. So let's put an image there just to make it fancy. Um, I have no idea what image. I'm just going to search for navigation and whatever I find. Okay, just now remember the shape of your image should be something. Okay, this looks okay, like uh, horizontal because the shape of our website is mostly, you know, like horizontal for the banner. So it's kind of like easier to work with. So I'm just going to use this here. This looks like this might work. Actually, <clears throat> excuse me. If you're doing this professionally, then you, you're going to take pictures because right now, if you notice, this picture, if you look right here, you can see that the height, the dimensions is 961 px. The width of our of our banner is 1200. So you probably need a, a picture that is wider, you know, just to make it, just to be sure that um, you're not stretching the picture unnecessarily, right? So if you took a picture yourself, you definitely have a much, you know, a much bigger, you know picture. So I can go in here into tools. If I want to find a, a kind of like a bigger picture, go into tools here in Google, the Google search and look for a large size. Mary, uh, do you see this option here to look for a large size? Um. Yeah. What? I want to be sure I'm not losing you guys. You got to tell me. You know, if I'm too slow or too fast or whatever, just tell me yes. what's going on. Full size. So, yeah. Large. So wait. Yep. When you do a search and you click on images, then to the right you're going to see tools. You click on tools, it brings you to size, color, type, and all that. On the size, then you you can click on large. If you click on large, then maybe it's going to give you a larger picture, you know, so you don't have to do a lot of resizing. So I'm just going to scroll down here and find something that looks okay. Uh, I mean, you can use any picture, but I guess this one here should be all right. So it looks dark and scary, <laughs> good mm -hmm. easy anyway. So if you right click and view the, the image, then it looks too dark for my liking. Let me get something brighter, a bit more cheerful. Uh, let's see, let's go up here. Sure, I can find something that's a bit more cheerful here. How about this? This looks like, yeah, that looks cool. All right. So I'm going to use this here. It looks uh, pretty futuristic, or is this a bunch of games? <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. So, so now usually what we do is we just link, we just link to the picture, but now. Let's save the picture in our folder, just to give you a different option of how to work. Right, we're gonna save this picture in our folder. So save image as, go to the folder where you have those files. And then you can change the name, but make sure you, you keep the extension. If it's a JPEG file, you can see that the picture is originally JPEG. Um, you got to maintain the extension, but you can change the name 
name kind of looks too long. I'm just going to call it, um, you know, just GPS or something. So GPS.jpg. All right, so save the picture. So that's, that picture should be okay. So all I have to do now is go back here to my banner. Then you use the picture. How do you use the picture? Background image, right? Mm -hmm. uh, URL. And then you put your picture in there. Paste. So all now because I'm saving the, the image in my folder, I don't need the whole HTTP www blah blah blah, right? Because I need that if I was just going to link to the picture. But now I'm saving the picture like like I own the picture. I'm taking you know like I you know took my picture on my camera on my phone. That's how you do that. Or if you now remember that when you find images online, you can't just use any image you like commercially. We can do this because it's all part of education. So you're not committing any crime. But if you are trying to build a website for a friend or if you know your family or your job for a client, you've got to go and get your own pictures. Online, there are a lot of places online where you can buy pictures, not too expensive, very high quality. So you don't just grab any picture you like and put it on your website and go and you know say, hey, this is, you know, and you get paid for it. That is plagiarism, and you don't want to do that. That's a copyright infringement. But for class work, you can use whatever you like. It's for class work. You're covered. You're fine. All right, so that's how you use that image there. Let's see what happens. Let's preview. All right, so that's my picture that looks like something that belongs to NASA. Now, if you want to adjust the look of the picture, like you can see that we've, we've lost a lot of the picture, just a little part is showing. So if you want to see more of the picture, uh, just go back here and you can do background, size, cover. So background size cover should allow us to see more of the picture, right? Without doing any damage to the original dimensions. So if I check that out, background image URL to get the picture itself, the image, background size, dash size, cover. So let's see, if I refresh this page, you can see that I can now see more of the picture. So compared to the original, it looks, it looks good. So more, and you're still able to, to preserve the original dimensions of the picture. You don't want to squish it or stretch it. Can you move the picture? So if you wanted like the middle portion of it horizontally instead of. So move it to the right or to the left or something no, like that, right? Up, move it up and down or to the right. So down. that's, anyway. um, that's background, well, background position background position. So so if you say move it up and down, then that's going to be Y, right? Did I type that correctly? Background position. Why does that look wrong? <laughs> background position Y. It kind of looks wrong in my... Yeah, it's wrong. Um, why does that look funny? It's actually not, okay, well, let's see. So you're gonna do 50%, 50%. I'll tell you why it's in that color. I guess, I'll know in a second. So save background position Y. Uh, I didn't notice if it moved. Let me, I, I think I went too fast. I didn't really know this. Oh, I think it's just, I don't think it's 50, 50. I think it's, let me, let me change the number see what's happening there. I don't think anything moved. So in that, 
uh, let me see. Let me try something else. I don't know if I need the percentages there. Let me take it out. Nope. Okay. So <clears throat> that's all we can do. Um, can so you go background to the index position. Page? Say that again. Can you go to the index page really quickly? This is who? This is Shakaya. Uh, you want to see the index page? We haven't been here in the last 10 minutes. What are you yeah, looking I just, for? I just needed to um, look at it so I can copy it because I came in the class a little late. Yeah, if you get rid of the Y, it actually does change. So if you get rid of the Y? Yeah. So it's going to be background, position, and then yeah. colon, then what do you type after that? I mean, I left it as 50%, 50%. It's definitely zoomed in, but I don't know what exactly it's affecting. It's changed. So you don't know if it's moving up or down. Okay, we'll see in a second. Yeah, I don't know what the, 50, um, what's the 50%? What are you referring to there? Like, what, what, what are you doing? So it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like 50% from the bottom, from the top, something like that. So you have to kind of move the numbers around. So like 50 or 20, 30, no, it all has to, it has to equal a hundred. So it can be 30, 70, 20, 80, something like that. So let's see. Um, so if we do 20, 80, let's see what happens there. Suppose you just want to shrink it. No, 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 we're not trying to shrink. I thought you said you want to yeah, move the picture yeah, up. I, like, yeah, I was talking about like, if you want to, if you're trying to make this image fit into this space so that you have as much of it as possible, what are your options to do that? You can either, you can move it and center it a little better or you can shrink it, right? Those are the options. And I don't really know clearly how to do either. Well, when we use cover, cover gave us most of the picture. I mean, this is like the original picture. And here is, the picture. So it looks to me like we got most of it. No. Right. I happened to grab a different picture that was a lot bigger. So I'm like, okay. I have nothing basically. In my image. All right. So like a blurry background. All right. So the thing is, when you're, uh, let me keep this back up here for Shakaya. When you're, when you're choosing pictures. All right. When you're choosing pictures, right? It's kind of like a Marie. If you are going to buy furniture. For your living room all right or for your bedroom you have to know the size of your bedroom right like okay this is the door first of all to the bedroom this is how my how many feet of space i have right so you're not just going to go and buy any size furniture and say well i like this huge furniture here i'm just going to take it to my house well it's going to stay outside for a long time if you can't get in there you know what i mean so you have to know what is the dimensions of my of the different containers on my website. And then you get a picture that fits that container, right? Or you take a picture, you go to something like Photoshop. You know, if you have, uh, if you have uh, like I have Adobe Photoshop here, if you have Photoshop, then in Photoshop, you can decide, okay, well, my picture is, say for example, my picture is gonna be uh, this dimension is going to be this, or, you know, maybe this shape. So I'm going to get my picture, you know, you kind of creatively using graphic skills, get the picture to the size before you move it to your website. So we can't always just take any picture and just kind of squeeze and squish it up and make it fit. You have to do things deliberately. So not all, not all pictures you find online is going to fit. Sometimes you have to find very specific sizes. But in, in the real world, you know the size of your website containers and then you get pictures that fit. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you have a picture that roughly fits, but you want to move it up or down, this background okay, so that's position what we're trying to do or, now. Side, or side or side to side. All right, so let's do that. That's what we're trying to do now. So if I do this again, let me see. All right, so you know what? Let's go quickly here, because uh, I know that on, in W3 schools, 
we can do we can get uh, we can get help to do that. So let's do a search and say uh, image position in W3 schools. So do a search, and here we see the layout position property. So let's see what we find there. So positions, uh, no, 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 background, no, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for background position. Oh, I didn't type that correctly. Background position. Where was it? All right, background position right here. So let's see. Okay, so we have background position center. Uh, background position. Let's see. Okay, let's see this example here. No, not this one. Give me one second. Uh, right here. Okay, so background position 50 50. If we change this to background position, say 20, 80. All right, so it moves the picture around. So I think what we had was, was kind of correct. So the, the first number is 20 pixels. You're moving it down from the top. It like, looks what like. They, what are they referring to? Good question. Uh, background. I think I think because we use cover, I think because we use cover, I'm not sure much is going to change there. I'm just not seeing it. Uh, let's go back there. Uh, background position. Okay, let's reverse it the other way. Let's do 80, 20. Uh, is anyone else able to uh, get this part here just to see how you move the picture up or down in that frame? I thought I had it before, but I'm not sure where it is now. I think I have to look at, uh, there was something we did when we worked on the Red Sox project, right? So let's go there. Don't you set it to center? Which one was also center? Background position center. Yeah, but center, let's suppose we want to move the picture just slightly up or down. We did it with the Red Sox pictures, right? Didn't we do that? Yeah. What I was going to say Oh, you want to move it? Go ahead. Go ahead. You might need a picture that's, like, not sized as well to the container as this one is. So maybe if you made the banner, like, 100 pixels smaller, you would notice more of a difference. Oh. Because it's it's so close to the size that you just can't tell you, you can't yeah you can't tell right all right so okay yeah so it looks like yeah so it looks like it will be if the picture well i think you might be right there because if the picture had more had more like you say real estate you know had more like if it was an exceptionally big picture you might be able to move relatively right so for example, let's get a different picture. Maybe that will help to explain what we're talking about here. So let's say we got a different picture here. Let's use this picture and see if this works. I'm just gonna link it directly just for time. And let's see if we can do that, if we link that directly. So I'm just gonna link it here. I'm gonna take this out for one second, take out this background position here and then save. All right, so refresh the page. All right, so look at this picture. 
And if we put that back there, the background position now, we save it and refresh the page. Yeah, so you can see what, so you're absolutely right. Uh, was it Charles, right? Charles gave that suggestion. Yeah. So Marie, you see that if the picture is exceptionally large, larger than the container you have, then you can move it up and down, just like we just saw here. So 40%, 60%, you just have to play with the numbers. I can't tell you absolutely for sure what these numbers mean, but it's kind of relative to the whole box. If I made this 10%, for example, and this was 90, save, then you can see what happens here. Now it goes all the way up. So it looks like 10% from the bottom, from the top, 90%. So when you play with the numbers, you kind of come to a, a place that you're comfortable with. Like, okay, I like how it is so far. Also, if you use the, the position X and position Y, you can uh, input either negative or positive like pixel values, and it will move it that many pixels in that direction. If you want, like so, you mean if you do adjustment. like a like a minus y, and you say, um, and you say I like don't know, 50 negative, px, yeah, then it'll move it up 50 pixels. And if you said negative 50 pixels, it would move it down 50 pixels. I'm pretty sure. All right, so let's see. All right, so this is 50, and if we went the other the other direction, minus 50. Okay, well, there you go. So you have options there. You can do the pixels or you can do, I'm just gonna leave this picture there. It looks okay. Maybe it's gonna, it's telling us we're gonna be able to do all this stuff very soon, right? <laughs> all right, so let's keep going. So let's just say here, um, we can put a comment and say, uh, move the image, you know, up or down in the div. All right. So the reason why in my edit plus it shows in black is because this edit plus is not updated. If it was updated, then it will be like blue. So I'm not worried about that because it works. Okay, mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. keep going. Yep. When was, last again? Time, when was the last time you updated it? If you want me to be totally honest, I don't necessarily like updating this stuff because I like to, I like everything the way it is. When I update it, then it moves everything around, and then you know it gives me the latest, and I'm like, okay, where's where's the buttons? Everything has just disappeared now, and they've gone to different places. You know how it is with updates, right? So, it's like, how long do you think? When was the last time? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's probably forever ago. Anyway, let's keep going. It's, not, it's very, it's a very little thing. I don't, I don't really, walk. it doesn't bother me. So we want to do the navigation. We're going to spend time with navigation. Sorry, when you say navigation, right? The navigation bar, not the navigation picture, navigation bar. So right here, that's the next one. So just copy and paste just to make it easier. Now you can edit. So paste. So this is Navigation, I don't need all this stuff, obviously. Um, it's gonna be a much uh, thinner. So let's say, let's see what 50 pixels looks like. The height, the background color, I'm just gonna set it to yellow. So let's see what we've got here. All right, so that's my navigation bar in yellow right there. Okay, so um, how many um, links do we want? We're just gonna say go for four links, right? Maybe like about us, members, you know, directions, contacts, something like that. Four navigation links. Okay, so we have some more work to do for that navigation bar. This is just the, the container. The yellow is the container for whatever is gonna go in there. So if you go back to your index page, now you have to come here into navigation. You open it up like your sandwich. And then you gotta go in here and say, put your links there. So A-H-R-E-F, 
So basically, I want, uh, let's say, I don't know, um, about us, um, say, members, directions, um, I don't know, buy, buy something. All right, so we're going to have four links in there about us members, direction, or directions. This, this kind of looks weird. Let's just call this contact us. Okay. So each of these links is going to be in a link tag, obviously, a h r e f equals Same thing here. So just make them into links. Each of those four labels, make them into links. So uh, A H R E F equals quotation mark. And then the last one here. So you're gonna have four, you're gonna have four links about us. Well, there's no name, there's no file yet. Just leave it blank for now. Just trying to get the whole idea here. So when you refresh the page, it's gonna, so it's gonna look something like this, just right there, like that. About us, directions, by, contact, Nothing, nothing much. We haven't done anything much to it. So just create four links in there. Okay, so let's keep going here. Now let's design, let's do, so, let's do the design here. So you have to go back into your style sheet. Now, for you to get to your A tags, you have to, first of all, make reference to your navigation. So I'm, go I'm gonna copy this here, paste. Um, so here's what we're gonna do, navigation A. Right, the navigation A, it's like the path to the A tag. Navigation A. All right? All right. In fact, that should be A link, actually, A link. Navigation A link. So for the A link, uh, let's get rid of this here. We're going to give it a color for now and say the color is blue so navigation a link the a link is look at that see the the a link is how the links appear so you see that right now i have set a background color the a link points to how the links look like when you look at them how they appear so right now we're saying our links are gonna have a background color of blue. I mean, that's not the final, but that's how we wanna move forward. So a link is the appearance of the links the first time you see them. So right here, the, should I say, appearance of the links. 
if that makes sense to you, or you can write a comment that makes sense to you. Or should I say controls the appearance of the links? So, so far, it's a blue, uh, blue background that we can add, we can say we want the color, the text color to be white. The text color will be white. If I refresh the page, you can see uh, that for the appearance, right, for the appearance of the links, uh, it's going to be a blue background and uh, the color is going to be white. Is it good so far? You guys good so far? Yeah. Can you show me the index one more time? The index page? Where the links are set up. It's just the links oh, we God. have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah, the links are here. And make sure that your navigation, you open it up, it starts on line 11 and yeah, like a sandwich on line 14. So all this here is your navigation. You put the links in between the tags. Yeah. That's in between the opening and closing tag of the navigation. Okay. So let me create some space there. So that's your navigation right there. If you don't do that, it's going to be off. All right, so save that, make sure you, so working correctly. All right, so that's our, so that is, let's do some more stuff here. So now in terms of the width, right, the width of, the width of this navigation links um, what should the link? What should the width be? Hang you. What should the width? What should the what should the width of each be? The width of this uh, navigation, the yellow bar, is twelve hundred. So each of these links should be what the for the width? Three hundred. Three, exactly three hundred pixels. So three hundred px. Three hundred pixels for the width. If you refresh the page, uh, now it doesn't appear like anything is happening yet. When you set the three hundred, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so you notice what I what happened there. So after you set after you set the width, nothing is it's, it's like nothing has happened, and now you have to set the float left to get it to be the width you're trying it to you, you want it to be at. Right, so let's do that again. So take out the float width three hundred pixels. See, it doesn't look like it's changing at all. But when you put the float left so you can see how critical that float left is right it's like it's like such a big deal can you instead of you put the float pixels can you just say like if there's four of them that each one takes up 25 percent? is there a reason to do one or the other uh well like i said if you're if you know the if you know the specific dimensions then you can absolutely do that so 25 percent Same result. So 
it is the same result. So you get the same result there. So the float left is so important, it, it, it helps everything to spread out. Okay, but notice that it's still not as tall, it's not tall enough, it has to fill the height of the yellow box. So we need a height here. So the same height as, as the uh, navigation, 50 pixels. So you can see now that it fills that space there. Also, uh, we want we want to center we want to center the uh, the words in each of the links in the right position. Right now, it's kind of like off to the left, so we have to center it. So right here, uh, text align. Center. Text align is going to center it. So if you refresh the page, you can see that now it's centered. Each one is in its in center of its own link, each, each of the text. Now, because some of the words are longer than the others, it kind of appears like it's off, but it's absolutely correct. So text align center. Can we also do text decoration none, or do you want to keep the underline? Yeah, you can do that. I mean, there's a lot of, um, yeah, that makes sense. So text decoration none. So text decoration none, that is going to remove the underline. So if you refresh the page, you can see that the decoration is, the underline is gone. There is something else. If you want to drop the words down a little bit, because right now they're kind of like floated to the top of your container. So you want to bring it down a little bit. Uh, we can use line, H-E-I-G-H-T, line height. And let's try 45 pixels, maybe. And if you notice, if you refresh the page, yep, it drops it down just a little bit, uh, 45 pixels. Maybe you need a, a bit more pixels or less, but I think I'm fine with this so far. So it's gonna bring it down a little bit from the top uh. to like a middle, to the middle, middle position. Then of course you can change well, usually your whole page will have a standard, um, like your whole page will have a standard font, right? So if I go up here into the body, I put the font here and say font family is, um, I don't know, Verdana, maybe. Then that should affect, it's going to affect uh, this guy here. So you can see that that now changes, right? So if you set the font family in the body up there, it takes care of all the fonts on your entire website. If you put different things, so you set it up there, but if you put different things within a specific div, what wins? Like if, I set, if I set a different color or font family within a div, like in the banner div, I decided to like make them different. What, which one it will, has it, priority? It will be, it will be different. So it, it it's kind of like, body. it was kind of like, exactly, it will. The body is like everything that has no special um, styling. Well, you, I own you. 
But if you have any special style and very specific, then it's going to go with that. For example, if we say that we want to go into that navigation, and right here we say we want a font family that is different. Let me just do something weird so you guys can see how it comes out. Say I just want this script, right? You can see that it changes the script just for the navigation. So, yeah. If you have a very specific styling, it's suddenly going to... I actually like how it looks. <laughs> looks interesting. Let me increase the font size. It looks funny. Uh, font size... Let me say 35px or 32px. This is what I look interesting. It looks like, you know, it fits the whole navigation thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep it, but, you know, it looks interesting. Script. All right, so how about the hover? When you move your mouse over, you want it to have a hover effect, like... Uh, like this short stop reality website won't have a hover effect. All right, so I'm gonna, so we have to do, we have to go in here. You can basically just con just copy the whole navigation A link here, paste it down, down here, and change this A link to A hover, A hover. So A hover, all you have to do with A hover is change just the color of the background. So I can say it's going to be light blue, for example, right? That's all you change there. You want everything to be the same except the background color of the hover effect. So if I refresh the page, you can see that uh, I have a hover effect. But, well, the problem is, if you guys notice, when I hover, the text is not too clear. So I'm going to change the color. I'm going to kind of like reverse it. So the A link says it's blue, uh, dark, uh, blue background with a white text. When I hover, I want it to be the reverse. A light blue background with a blue, uh, blue text like that, blue text for the hover. So refresh the page. Now you can see if that looks okay to you, or you can use any combination of colors. I mean, you know, it's totally up to you. But um, that kind of works. So let me let me show you guys a little bit of Photoshop. I don't like to say magic, but maybe magic here. So you notice that my blue navigation here Let's say I was very particular about the colors matching. So right now, this picture here, follow the route. It has this blue, but it's different from this blue I see here. So if I want to match the colors exactly to be the same, okay? So I can use Photoshop. So here's, let me show you guys that. So I'm going to go to Photoshop here. Uh, I'm just going to open a, just any blank page here doesn't really matter just anything all right so now i have to somehow take a screenshot of this picture so i'm going to take a screenshot of that picture so i can be sure i grab you know the color i'm looking to copy so i grab that here i copy i go into photoshop and i have to paste it here so uh where is it that's my paste what should we do if we can't afford a Photoshop license? Uh, talk to your mom. How about that? Can you talk to your mom? Say, mom, I need help here. Um, just kidding. They're real expensive, I mean, though. Well, Photoshop is not, I mean, it's not required for this course. I'm just giving it to you as an extra. Okay, so but do you fact, know of any free programs that would be a good substitute? Um... Yeah, I think that I think Paint, Microsoft Paint, which is on every every Windows computer, um, Photoshop Paint. So the only thing I'm not sure about is if it has this. Well, let me see. If you go to the eyedropper tool here, color picker, right? So if I click here, okay. Well, it does the same thing. 
Actually, you know, I didn't realize that until you mentioned it. So if you go to paint, right, you paste the you paste the picture or the color you're trying to copy, you go up here to the color picker, you click on it, now it gives you the color. So what you do is if you double click, is it double click on this color now? Oh, uh, you say I wanna get the I wanna get the hexadecimal value now. So edit colors. Okay, so that's it right there. So if you edit the colors, now how do we get the hex value? I know how to do that in Photoshop. I haven't done that here. Um, let me see, add to custom colors. So I think it's a little bit of extra steps, but maybe we can solve the problem. Because in Photoshop, if I do the same thing in Photoshop, Go to my eyedropper tool, which is right here. No, I mean, just click here. Once I click on the color in, Java, in Photoshop, it just gives me the hexadecimal value right here. All right. So what you can do is what you see in paint, you see the uh, red, the green, and the blue values, but somehow you need to know what that converts to in hexadecimal values. So let's see. There should be something online that you can do that. Uh, so let's let's go online and say uh, convert uh, RGB to hex value. Let's see, see if we find something that do that does that. Okay. So look at that. RGB to hex. Okay, so it looks like we have a solution, Charles. If you go into paint and you say the R is 27, you put it in here. Uh, the green is 130. And the blue is 249. 249. Convert to hex. Boom, you have your hex. And that's the same thing we got in Photoshop, right? Exactly, 1B82F9. So you're in business. So you copy this here, and you take it to your code, and uh, that's going to be, what is that now? Let's see, let's get back on. So that's going to be the background color of your navigation. So you go back there, navigation, background color right here. You paste it here, and that should give you a close match. So save that, refresh your page, and look at that. The colors are identical to what's in your picture. Charles, did you get all those steps? You're going to paint and all that. Did you guys follow those steps or did I lose you? I don't have MS Paint, so I can't do that. Yeah, no, well, I got it. Well, there should be something that can allow you to, I mean, there's a lot of flexibility online, right? If you can take a picture, um, there should be, I mean, I don't know, I don't have all the tools, but I know that just trying paint, you know, give us, you know, helped us to do that or Photoshop or, I think there's something also called, um, I think I've used a, pro, a, pro, a free program called GIMP. GIMP, G-I-M-P, GIMP is like, it's kind of like Photoshop. So you see this program here. If you download GIMP, GIMP is a little bit like Photoshop. Actually, like a lot like Photoshop. I used this like a while back, but I don't use it anymore because I have Photoshop. But if you look at how uh, the interface looks like, you see it has, you know, the interface is very similar to Photoshop. And I'm sure you can find YouTube tutorials to help you walk through it. So the interface is very, very much like Photoshop, right? Um, and it's kind of like Paint also. So and GIMP is free. Has anybody used GIMP before? I have. You have, right? Does it, does it work? It does everything? I mean, it does most things? Yes. It does more than you okay. can do on Paint. I mean, yeah, on Paint. Thing. All right, there you go. So. GIMP is a free option, so you're free to download that. I'm not sure if it's um, 
if it's platform specific, like maybe for Windows or but I think it's on everything but Chromebooks. It says Linux, OS X, and Windows. Oh, okay. There you go. So. All right, so check that out and you'll be, you'll be in business. But that's how to, that's a good way to, you know, when you want to get a picture and you want to get the colors that you can do some, you know, little graphic design uh, manipulation and get the picture to look like exactly what you're trying to do, right? Um, and in fact, if I want to make this more fancy, you see this um, yellow signs here? I can decide to make my, maybe the hover effects yellow. So I can say the hover effect here is gonna be yellow instead. All right, so something close. Oh, I think it's actually orange, not yellow. Oh, well, it's in between yellow and orange, but you guys get the idea, right? You can. You can be very, um, what's the word? I can make this blue, I can make this black. You can be as fancy as you want, all depending on what exactly you're trying to do with your website. All right, so we're gonna leave it there for now. Let's do the other, let's do the uh, bottom part and then, you know, get the pictures to align like we're talking about, like getting a picture to be to the left or to the right and then the words, something like that. And then we can and then we can wrap up this um, project here. Are you also going to go over the transparency bar thing? Because that's one thing I couldn't figure out on the other assignment is how to have things in front of other things or behind things. Well, there are lots of ways to do that. Um, so, I mean, you can do the picture wrap first. That's fine, but I just I'm not sure how to have the front back images. So, um, okay. Let's do a transparency. Let's see how much time we have. Let's do a transparency. This effect here, uh, where you have the perfect destination, this little transparent part. So let's let's go and create another. We need like a different container space for that. I'm just going to go here and copy the banner and put it in here. So we want it to be we want it to be inside the banner, right? Uh, you know. That's one option. So let's see if that works anyway. We open up the banner and we put, uh, we put this in here. All right, so we're gonna say that is, um, let's just call it, just for lack of a better word, transparent, you know, um, bar. Something like that, transparent bar. All right, transparent bar. And the transparent bar is gonna have a word like, um, you know, I don't know, something like that. I don't know. I'm just using any words that come to my mind. So just gonna have a word like this. So this, that's the bar. If you save it and refresh the page, it's gonna look like, where was it now? We don't even know where it is right now. Oh, you see, it's up here. It's right up here to the top right, top left. So we don't want it to be there. Ultimately, we want it to be to come down here just um, above the navigation, but this is where it is right now. So let's see how we get it to you know, move around. So go to your style sheet and you want to do something for, just going to copy the banner here. When you do a lot of copy and paste, it saves you so much time. And you make a few mistakes maybe. So transparent bar, uh, we're going to do the style for that here, paste. Okay, so first thing, let's say we know the width. Uh, let's get rid, of, get rid of all this here. So we know the width is going to be uh, 1,200 pixels. The height, I don't know, the height is maybe 
a little bit taller than the navigation. So, or maybe same as the navigation. The navigation is what is as the navigation is 50, 50 uh, pixels. So it's 50. So we'll say the color is for now, it's going to be transparent, right? Well, let's just say that for now, the color is something we can really see. We'll say it is orange. It's going to be orange. So refresh the page, and now that's it up there. So the trick is we need to get it down here just like your exotic travel. It needs to be down here at that position. Uh, so we have it up here. We need to bring it down. So there's a little way to do that, a few ways, but here's one way. So you use this, this property called position um, relative. relative so relative positioning means um like within that space it's gonna move it's gonna move it uh within the space within that uh within the banner relative to the banner sort of if that makes well let me let's do some more so you see how it works relative to that space that it is in it's like Whatever you do, stay in the banner. That's what relative kind of means. Whatever you do, stay inside the banner because remember, we put that, we place that transparent bar inside the banner div. So relative just means whatever you do, stay in there, if that makes any sense. So we're gonna say top. Now relative position, I mean position relative from the top, we're gonna say move down, um, let's see. 100 pixels, move down 100 pixels relative to the banner. So right now it's inside the banner, we say from the top. So if you refresh the page, you can see that it drops down 100 pixels. It's all relative to the banner. It's inside the banner. So while you're in the banner, move down from the top 100 pixels. Right, we want it to go down here, you know, all the way here. So, um, we're gonna say, actually, instead of doing from the top, how about if we do from the bottom? Let's see what happens from the bottom. And we'll just say 10 pixels, or maybe even zero. Let's see if that works. Okay, it's, doing, it's kind of doing the opposite, so. I think this is what we got for now. Top, so let's take it down a little bit more to, let's say 300 pixels. All right, uh, let's, that seems to be where we want it to be at. That kind of looks okay at 300 pixels, looks okay. Now we need to change the transparency and move the text to the right. So let's work on that a little bit more. That seems to be fine. I'm gonna close this paint. I'm done with this Photoshop too. All right, so uh, we're gonna say uh, the text, first of all, the text. So the text, we need to put the text in, a, in its own kind of, in its own mini container, right? In its own mini container. So we're gonna put it in a span, we can put in a span tag. That's like a, a mini container. So span, we give it an ID and we say um, transparent bar text. Transparent bar text. So if, you know, when you give IDs to all your items on the page, it's easier for you to control them, move them around, give them colors, right? That's the ideal way to design any, you know, your website, your web pages. So transparent bar text, um, save. So here I'm going to create a, let me just copy this also. 
So transparent bar text. All right. So the transparent bar text, <coughs> excuse me, we want it to have a font size, want it to be quite big. So let's say 45 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so it's, it's a good size, like your exotic travel. Or maybe it's too big, you can reduce the size to 40. Okay, so it's 40. And now we want to move it to the right side. So we're going to say right here, um, I think we can just do float right. Float right to the right. There you go. So float right. It goes to the right side. Um, or if you don't want to do float right, because you might want to have some space, you know, maybe to the right edge, to the right edge here, somewhere like here. So if you, if you don't want to do float right, you can just say, um, say, I don't know, position, same thing, position, relative. And then you say, uh, from the right side, uh, move it, from the right side, move it 15 PX. So let's see what happens. Oh, I think I have to reverse it the other way. From the left side, is it? From, from the right side. Let me just be sure. Okay, so from the left side, we've got to move it quite a little bit here. So let's do 515. All right, so it's moving as much as we want it to move. All right, so it depends on either where you want it to stop. If you want to, you know, or you want to push it a little bit more, I can just go for 900. So it's gonna stay right there, right here at this spot here, right? So float right, we'll move it to the extreme right uh, using the option. So if, you, so if you do float and you say right, um, I'm gonna comment this out. So we'll say this uh, moves the text to the um, move the text to the far right with no space. Well, to the far right. All right. So you have more control if you use position relative, and you know from the left side. Uh, it's 915 pixels. You have more control over where it stays, right? So the last thing will be to do the transparency like we have in the, um, right here. So the transparency, transparency values, let me go back to W3 schools and say, uh, you know, transparency, transparent background. So transparent background property, uh, let's see what we have here. So here's, a, here's an option if you want transparency. So you can, that's not right. Uh, I think that's correct. That's not what I want. Specify the background with RGB. Uh, Background color transparent. Where is it? Uh, let's do that again. Transparent. Okay, so let's see here. Back 
default color transparent. Okay, so it looks like if you say background color transparent, let's try that. So right here, background color transparent, let's see what happens. Well, transparent is not gonna show at all. I don't think that's what we're looking for. It's not gonna show at all. And that's not even it at all. It's not what we want. So let's get the correct, uh, Correct. Yeah, something like this is what we're looking for, right? So let's see. Where is it? Full back color, black background. Ah, this should be it here. So this is black background with 0 0.5 opacity. So I'm just going to copy all this line here and stick it in here and say Yep. So let's see if that works. Well, I put it in the wrong. I put it on the text. It should be in the background. Okay. So let's take it out of here. It should be right here instead. In the background itself, right? Yep. That's it. So now we have to make the text a different color. All right, so a different color for the text is going to be color white. All right, so look at that. So we're able to make that into um, with a background, with a transparent background using that uh, code, RGBA, and then you specify your, you know, your values here, and this is just going to give it a 0 0.5 opacity, which is, you know, it's a good transparency to have. So right there, Marie, is that what you're looking for? Something like that? Yeah, well, it's what you're looking for, but yes. It's what I'm looking for. It's yeah. not what I'm looking for anymore. It's what you guys are looking for, because it's you guys supposed to do it. No, <laughs> so no, no, but I'm saying you're... I'm not looking for it. No, well, you're looking for it because it's in the assignment, and it's nothing I've ever seen before, so... Okay. okay. Got it. Well, it's supposed to stretch your abilities here. Sometimes you have to do some research and like, oh, how do I figure this out? But you know, this exercise will help us with some of this uh, requirements, right? Uh, the navigation, the transparency, and then some of the code that does that work, right? And also how to, you know, get, if you want to be specific about a hexadecimal color, that you can use Paint or GIMP or Photoshop like we just did. And then you have your hover effects and stuff like that. Wait, can you go back um, to the index document? The index document Yeah. right here. I don't know why mine looks so much more different. I'm trying to figure it out. Let's go to your, let's, let's see your screen. Okay. You know what? Before we see your screen, right? You know what? You know what? Let's. Why don't we just complete this thing? I mean, we have the video, right? We have you, we have the recording. Uh, yeah, so let's do the let's screen. do this bottom part just before we run out of time, and then we'll go, we'll go to your screen. I want us to do something that looks like you know how you are able to align these images. So I don't want us to miss that. So just give me one second. Let's finish that part in this orange section here. So let's go here, and we're going to say the content area. So we're gonna split the content area into two. So this is the content area here. I'm gonna split it into two and say, just gonna copy this because of time. So content area left and content area, just gonna copy and paste that content area right, R-I-G-H-T. Okay, so I'm just going to put a bunch of stuff there, like some, anyway, let me just save it first. I'm just going to say uh, one, 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 two, 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 something like that, just for now. All right, so I'm going to split that up 
I'm divided, you know, evenly here. So go to where? Go here. Copy this. So you guys can just watch this part because I want to see before the time runs out. You can always review this video, this recording, and see what we did. So content area left. Put that here. And it's going to be 50% because we, you know, want to just be exactly half. So the width is 50%. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do exactly use pixels, PX, because we know it's 1200 for a reason. I'll tell you why in a second. And let's say, let's get a background color here. Let's say the background color is, I don't know, silver. Uh, the height is the same height, so the height of that bottom part is. Did we have? I don't think we even did that. Did we do that? Oh, the content area. We didn't do the content area at all. Yeah, we we haven't gone to the content area. So let's do the content area and give it a height before we do the content area left. So content area. Just gonna copy this here. All right, so the content area is, we can see that is um, green. Yeah, cause the red that we see now, this red that we see is part of the container, isn't it? Yeah, it's the container. So, and we know that the container was 600 pixels. So if this container was 600 pixels, and the banner is 350, so we have what? 250 left? We have 250 left for the navigation, we took out 50, so we have 200 pixels left. So the, con the content should be 200 pixels for the height. And the width is say 1200, all right? So if I save all that, that should become green now. All right, so that's green. And then let's fix that. Um, yeah, let's fix this two guys here. So this is, so content area left and content area right, R-I-G-H-T. Uh, this is gonna be light green. Yeah, so half, half, half the width. And the height is gonna be the same as the height of the, con of the content. So that's just, that's just pretty straightforward. All right, so you can see that uh, we have the height. Well, I should use a different color. The green is a bit confusing. So let's just say light blue. Light blue for that. All right, so this is gray. So we're gonna just float this so it can fit to the right side. Okay, we're gonna float the 222, the blue box. So it floats to the right of 111. So just for both, just put your float, uh, float left, copy that and do it here, float left. That should get everything into that content. Yep, there you go. So that's what we're trying to do. Now let's put some text on an image there, right? So the image, so it's gonna fit in here. We're gonna put some text in here and in here and, and an image. I'm just gonna go, just get some random, I'm just gonna grab this random text here. Doesn't matter. Just grab some random text. And we want the text to appear here and here, right? So, so that's gonna be in this box here. So let me space this out. Open this up a little bit, open this up here, and paste my text there. So that's my text. And I'm gonna put the same text here. So that's the text that's gonna be there. I just make this a little bit different. So, you know, we see that there's a difference, just slightly different. All right, so text for the left side, text for the right side. 
All right. So let me put my images there now, just to finish this up. Uh, or oh, first of all, you notice that there's a like, you see that the edges, the text is kind of like right at the edges, right? So I may not want that to happen. The text being right at the edges there. Um, but let's leave that for now. Let's just get two images. So I'm going to say where we had some images earlier. Let's get another image like this. All right, so this, picture, this image is a pretty big. Let me look for a smaller image, say an icon, like a small image there, small picture. All right, so I'm gonna just use this one here. I'm just gonna to link to it directly because of time right here. Copy that. So there are two ways to do that, um, but I'm just gonna put it directly in here. So I'm gonna put the image uh, uh, where is it? Right here in this box and in this box. So right here, you create your image tag, IMG source right there. And then I paste my image. I can give it a, just to make it a bit smaller. I'll just say, make sure it's uh, 120 pixels. Actually, I don't know what the size looks like right now, but let's see. Okay, it's right there. Um, so if I want the, well, it depends on what the size is originally, but I can just leave the size the way it is. So how do we float? Now let's say we want to float the text, right? To be just around that image. You want to float it. So what you can do is you can give this um, image here, give it an ID. So say give it an ID and we say uh, equals the ID is let's say um, I'm just going to call it picture map. That's the ID. So I go here to my style sheet and I say picture map. And what I want to do is I want to float it. So if I, so what's going to happen is if I, once I float this image to the left, automatically all the text around it, you're going to see what happens. So float left. I float the image to the left, right? So you give the image uh, right here on line 22, you give the image a an ID uh, right here. You give it your, you put it in your style sheet and then you float to the left. And then you refresh this page and see what happens here. So you can see that uh, you've kind of floated. If you have more text, it doesn't matter if you have more text. If I go and copy more text there, just going to copy this text and paste it. More text right there. Save. It's just going to float around the whole thing. If I add more text still, still a bit more. So it just goes around it. Now, obviously, we need some space around, you know, just kind of to the right of the picture, right? To, on the edge right here, some space. So... You go back to your style sheet. Like I said, when you create an ID for any item, it's easier to manage. So we say padded, no, I think it's margin. Margin right. So to the right of the picture, you want to create a, you know, some space, like a, you know, a, a margin. So we're just going to say 12, 12 pixels. So to the right of that, of that picture, we're going to create uh, a space. So you can see that space that's been created there, right? The little space to the right makes it look, uh, you know, kind of like it's, the display is better. And if I split my text into paragraphs, maybe one paragraph there, close it here, start a different paragraph here, close it out here, save. Now let's see what it looks like. Now it looks okay. Maybe I don't need a paragraph at the top, uh, or maybe I want to create a, a gap at the top there so it's not touching my navigation bar. Okay, so 
I can go back in here and say margin the top the top part of it so same 12 pixels so that it creates a it creates a margin at the top part of the picture and to the right side of the picture so you can see that little space there so this might look okay maybe that's what you're trying to do and then just replicate the same thing for the right side so the right side I can just make it easy on myself and just copy everything I have here just copy the image, uh, the whole text here, everything, and just stick it in here. I can give it a different name, say, Picture Map 2. Picture Map 2. And then right here, I have Picture Map 2. Picture Map 2. I can change the picture to a different picture. So how about if I have a different picture here, say this picture here, just copy the link up here, go back to my code and stick it in here. That's a PNG, it doesn't matter, it's a PNG. So now we should have both pictures being displayed. All right, so this picture is probably a bit, a bit bigger or smaller. It doesn't fit. So maybe I have too much text. Let me take out some of the text here. All right, then I need to do the flow. So let's see what was happening with the flow. Oh, I didn't save this. I didn't save this uh, file. If you don't save, it's not going to show, obviously. All right, so now ultimately, if I get rid of the background colors, right so get rid of the background colors here light blue just make that uh white and the other one too is going to be white now it's going to look even much better so refresh the page maybe it looks better um so a lot of little adjustments that you can make uh, if that's what you're trying to do make some adjustments so you can make this box. Maybe I can make this box a bit smaller. Maybe the width of this box, for example, can be, I don't know, can be, say, 570. 570 for the box to the left. And then the box to the right, um, I can make that, uh, maybe uh, make that 570 also. If I make it 570, now I have this space. So what I can do is I can give it a, a kind of a, like a, a padding. One of them can be padded so that there's space in between both pictures. So I can just say, go here and say padding, uh, left padding. So I did uh, what I do here. I took 30 out. So if I do 30 pixels to the left, it should cover that space up. To the left of this here oh what am i doing here padding left okay so that gives us a space here and uh we have a little bit more space here so we can add a bit more padding i think that should be about 60 to take care of that space all right so it gives us that space there in between um and then finally, for your text, well, this is not always necessary, but for your text, if you want your text to be properly aligned, you can say text align. You can say justify. If you justify the text align, see what happens here to your left. You can see that right here, the text becomes justified, like it gets to the very edge of your box. And if I justify uh, this one right here, same thing is going to happen. It makes your your whole text presentation look pretty neat. You can see that it looks pretty neat, like it's cut off right on the edge, cut off on the edge, and that might look, you know, more interesting to you. So Charles, where did you? <laughs> 
ready to get lost. I mean, it's all recorded here, so you can always review it. I just wanted us to cover this last part before the class ended. But, you know, kind of makes sense how we did this? Yeah. No, the bottom good. part? Yeah. All right, so let me um, stop the recording now. If you have any questions in the next one minute before the class ends, and then we'll do the attendance now. Yeah, I'm taking any questions. I just had a typo, that's all. Oh, those typos can, you know, how they, how they are. <laughs>